Okay, in this section 1-7, uh, we are talking about angles. And so in this lesson, okay, our goal is to be able to uh, learn about what angles are and how to use their notation correctly. So when we're looking at an angle, an angle is formed by two rays that have the same starting point, two rays that have the same starting point. So when you're looking at an angle, this part right here is, an, is the angle, right? And so <clears throat> the angle is made from uh, two rays, and those are considered the sides of the angle. And then the starting point, okay, that's the vertex. The starting point where it comes from, that's your vertex. Okay, so angles made from a vertex and two rays. All right? Now, angles are measured in what is known as degrees. So many of you have heard of degrees before. Degrees is not a straight measure like measuring how long a uh, segment is. Okay? Degrees are a rounded measure that measures an angle, right? And so when you're looking at different types of angles, they can be classified by their angle measure. Like, for example, if you've got an angle whose measure is 90 degrees, that's called a right angle. If you've got a, an angle whose measure is less than 90 degrees, like, for example, 42, you would call that an acute angle. And if you've got an angle whose measure is more than 180 degrees, say 158, then that's known as an obtuse angle. So many of you may have heard these uh, vocabulary words before. By the way, also, just to kind of give you an idea of angles, of course, don't forget to put it in perspective. All the way around, 360 degrees, okay, half a circle uh, is 180 degrees, 90 degrees, and so on. All right? Now, what we want to make sure that we can do now at this point is... Uh, take a few minutes to make sure that we know how to name these angles correctly. How to name these angles correctly. And so if I have this angle here, and there is one point labeled on the ray as point B, the vertex is labeled as point A, and a point on this vertex labeled as point C, okay, as long as I have the vertex labeled and one point on each one of the sides or each one of the rays of the angle labeled, then uh, I can name this particular ray. And so, or excuse me, this angle. So if I go through and I name this angle correctly, first of all, okay, we will use the angle symbol. So just like lines and segments and rays all have symbols, we also have the angle symbol. Now, when you're naming an angle, okay, you're going to use three letters. And it's the letters of three points that are on the angle. Now, the first point has to be a point uh, that's on one of the sides of the angle, one of the rays. So I can start by calling this angle B. And remember, we're going to use three letters. And the middle letter has to be the vertex of the angle. It's got to be the vertex of the angle. So the vertex of the angle is A. That has to be next. And then the third letter has to be the letter of a point on the other side of the angle, on the other ray. So in this instance, we've got C, and so I can call this angle BAC, BAC. Now remember, the middle letter has to be the vertex. The middle letter has to be the vertex. A has to be in the middle. Now, um, you can also start from the other side, so another way to correctly name this angle would be angle CAB. I could also call this angle CAB, all right, CAB. Okay. Now, there are a few exceptions, and in this case, if there is just one angle that's coming out of this vertex, which is the case here, or one angle that's drawn out of the vertex, I should say, then you can get away with just naming this as angle A. So in this case, you can get away with naming this angle with just the vertex letter. And the reason why is because there is only one angle that's drawn out of this vertex. Okay? Um, if there was more than one, you would have to use three letters. But if there's only one angle that's drawn out of that vertex, you can get away with just the vertex letter in that case only. All right? And also, there's one more notation that you may see. Notice here that this angle is labeled with a 1. And so in diagrams where the angles are labeled with numbers, you can also use that number to refer to the angle. So I could also call this angle 1. So for this angle that I've drawn here, there's actually four correct ways that you can name this angle. 
And of course, if you have a question saying, uh, name this angle, you only have to use one to be correct. Okay? So remember, typically three letters, okay? the middle letter being the vertex every time, or if there's only one angle coming out of that vertex that's drawn out of that vertex, you can get away with only the middle letter. Or if the diagram has labeled the angle with a number, you can use the number. But in all cases, make sure that you use the angle symbol, which I did not hear. I'm going to add that. So again, in all cases, make sure that you're using the angle symbol in front of the letters. Make sure you're using the angle symbol in front of the letters. Okay? Now, uh, let's take a look at this diagram. Okay, so here uh, I have a point, and I've got three rays that are drawn out of this point. Okay? And so here, this will illustrate why it's important to make sure that you use uh, three letters to name these angles. Because right now, if I just say, if I just use one letter, if I just use the vertex letter and I say look at angle D, then there are several different angles here that have a vertex of D and you wouldn't know which one that I'm talking about, right? So the angle from here to here has a vertex of D. The angle from here to here has a vertex of D. And the angle from here all the way over to here also has a vertex of D. So if I say look at angle D, you don't know which one of the three angles I'm talking about. So in this diagram, we must use three letters to name the angle because there's more than one angle coming out of vertex D. That's the reason. So if I wanted to name this top angle, if I wanted to name this top angle, I would name it as angle. And remember, start with a point that's on this side of the angle. So angle A, the middle letter always has to be what? The vertex, so D comes next. And then the third letter has to be a point on the other side of the angle or the other, other ray of the angle. So this angle, if I were trying to name this one, I would call it angle A, D, B. All right? Now, you could also reverse that. Angle B, D, A is the same angle. Now, here's what I want you to notice. When you uh, read the angle, when you say the angle, it actually outlines the angle for you. So angle A, D, B. When you trace those letters A, D, B, it should trace the angle you want to name. All right? So if it doesn't trace the angle you want to name, you know you didn't name the correct angle. This angle right here is not angle D, A, B. Right? Because when I go D to A to B, that traces out a different angle. And plus, remember, the vertex of this angle is not A. It's D, so D has to be the middle letter. Keep that in mind. Okay, what if I wanted to name this bottom angle right here? Well, once again, it, I would make sure I'd use the angle symbol. And I would start with a letter that's on this side of the angle, so that's angle B. The vertex is D. And a letter on the other side of the angle would be C. All right, so angle B, D, C is the correct name for this particular angle. Okay, so once again, just make sure that you're aware that you could reverse that. C, D, B is also a correct name for this particular angle. And so, again, notice I've used three letters. The middle letter is always the vertex, and the other two letters are letters uh, of points that are labeled on the sides of the angle. Now, what if I wanted to name this entire angle, the whole thing, the big angle, from here to here? All right? So if I wanted to name the whole thing, that would be angle. And again, I can start with a point on this side, A. What's the vertex? D. And a letter on the other angle is C. So the big angle from here to here is angle A, D, C. And once again, when you say the angle, you should be tracing it out. A, D. D, C. That's where my angle is. All right, so again, uh, make sure that you're using the correct letters, and don't forget to make sure that the middle letter has to be the vertex. All right, and so I didn't use point B at all to name this big angle because point B is not on either one of the sides of that angle. So keep that in mind when you're naming these angles. Make sure that the letters you've written trace out the angle that you want. If it doesn't, then you did not name it correctly. Then, of course, as usual, it could be reversed. I could call it C, D, A, and that is the same angle. All right, so in this le lesson, we want to make sure that we're comfortable with identifying angles and being able to name them correctly. 
all right, because some of the, this lesson and then the lessons to come, uh, the success really hinges on being able to identify and name angles correctly. That's the first step, okay? Um, here is the next thing that we want to take a look at here. I've got two angles drawn, all right, two separate angles. Both of their measures are 80 degrees, and so they have the same angle measure. So again, we're getting back into a discussion of equal and congruent. Remember, equal is used for numbers. Congruent is used for objects. So if I just look at this angle, P, Q, R, and verify that I have named it correctly, Q is the vertex. The vertex has to be in the middle. P, Q, R, that's this angle. You can trace it out. is 80 degrees. And angle D, E, F is also 80 degrees. Angle D, E, F is also 80 degrees. So the question is, what symbol should I put between these two angles? Well, what are angles? Are angles numbers or objects? Angles are objects, and so what sign goes between them or what symbol? Okay, it should be congruent. I would say that angle PQR is congruent to angle DEF. The two angles are congruent. Now, if I just wanted to talk about the angle measure, the 80 degrees, kind of like how when we, in the previous lessons, we talked about the measure of the segment, how long the segment is, Okay, we can also talk about the degree measure of the angles. And if I wanted to talk about the degree measure of the angles, I just put a lowercase m outside of the angle itself. Now this is read measure of angle PQR and the measure of angle DEF. Now, look at the measures. Are measures numbers or are they objects? Well, measures are numbers, 80 and 80. So I would put equal between these two. All right, so again, just kind of driving home the difference between equal and congruent. Congruent is for objects. These angles are objects that are the same. They're congruent. Okay, equal is for numbers. The measures are numbers, and then so they're equal, 80 and 80. So this stands for the angle itself. This stands for the measure of the angle. One's an object. One is a number. All right, so make sure that you don't forget that as we move uh, through the lessons. Okay. A couple of vocabulary words we want to look at here. Complementary, some of you may have heard of that term before, but complementary refers to two angles. And when I'm writing my definitions, I'm using the angle symbol. Number one, it makes our writing shorter, and number two, it gets us used to the symbolism. Two angles whose sum is 90. Complementary refers to two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. Two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. A couple of things to make sure that we point out. Number one, it's two angles, not three. So angles that are 30, 30, and 30, right, they're not complementary. Even though they add up to 90, it's two angles, not three or more. Keep, uh, keep that in mind. And uh, number two, um, they don't have to be uh, together. They can be apart, and as long as they add up to 90, then they're complementary. Supplementary, two angles whose sum is 180 degrees. Two angles whose sum is 180. So if they add up to 90, they're complementary. If they add up to 180, they are supplementary. And this is for angles and their measures. Now, here's an easy way to remember this. C comes before S in the alphabet, 90 comes before 180 in the number line. So they're in order. C comes before S, 90 comes before 180. If you remember that, that they're both in order, that you'll, you, then you'll never get them mixed up. Okay, straight angle is the next vocabulary word that we want to come to. And a straight angle is really just an angle whose degree measure is 180 degrees. So when you draw it out, straight angle actually just looks like a straight line. And that's all it is. Okay? Straight angle, 180 degrees. All right, so now, based on the things that we've talked about here, we have some practice problems that we want to take a look at. Okay, so uh, with these problems, we have a diagram that goes along with it. There are several angles that are drawn in here, and then there are several measurements to certain angles that are given. Okay, so based on this diagram, the first question is to name a 50-degree angle. Name a 50 degree angle. Well, when I'm looking on my diagram, I can see that this angle right here is labeled as 50 degrees. And so if I wanted to answer that question, 
uh, name a 50 degree angle, I just need to name this angle. So remember what we said, you need three letters, right? I can't just get away with the vertex letter here because there are many angles that are coming out of that vertex. And so again, we'll start with the angle uh, symbol and I will start with a point that's labeled on this ray of the angle, which is A. The middle letter has to be the vertex, F, and we'll finish it with a le uh, the letter of a point that's labeled on the other ray, or the other side of the angle, which is E. All right, so uh, angle AFE is a 50 uh, degree angle, is a 50 degree angle. Now, there's actually another one, okay? There's another one that would be correct. There's another 50 degree angle. And if I look up here at this part of the diagram, don't forget what this symbol means. We talked about it in a previous lesson. This symbol means 90 degrees. Now, if this angle is 40 degrees, and the whole thing from here to here is 90 degrees, then I know that this angle right here also has to be 50 degrees. And the reason why I know that is because these two have to add up to 90 degrees. So 40 plus 50 makes 90, which means since I know that this is also 50 degrees, I can write angle CFD as a correct answer. CFD is also a correct answer here because this angle has to also be 50 degrees based on the diagram. All right, so either one of those two would be a correct answer. Either one of those two would be a correct answer. Name a right angle. There's a right angle that is drawn up here on the diagram. So that would be angle, once again, make sure that you start with a point on uh, this side. So that would be B. The middle letter has to be the vertex, F. And then you finish with a point that's labeled, the letter of a point that's labeled on the other side, which is D. So a right angle here would be F, uh, B, F, D. Now remember, if you want to see if you've listed the angle correctly, when you read it, it should trace out the angle, B, F, D. BFD is the correct angle. Or you could reverse that. Uh, D, F, B would be also a correct answer because the angles could be read from either direction. And then it would be the same angle. All right, so if we wanted to reverse that, uh, we could. Now, there's a separate angle that also is 90 degrees. So once again, okay, one thing we want to kind of point out here is a straight line a straight angle has a measure of 180 degrees. That's half of 360. So what that means is if this angle is 90 degrees, then this angle would also be 90 degrees. So I could also list that as a correct answer. That would be angle B, F, A, B, F, A. Would also be 90 degrees based on the diagram. Because remember we talked about straight angle. It's 180 degrees. Well, if this half of it is 90, then the other half would also have to be 90. So B, F, A would also be a correct answer. You could reverse that. A, F, B is the same angle. So these are two separate angles that could be listed as a correct answer here. Okay? All right, next question. Let's see what it says. It says describe D, F, E as acute, obtuse, or right. D, F, E. Let's find this angle first because one thing that we have to be able to do is look at a diagram and find the angle that it's asking me for. It's asking me for D, F, E. E. So D, F, E is this angle from here to here. Okay? We see that it's labeled as 130 degrees. 130 degrees is more than 90, so we know that that is an obtuse angle. Obtuse is correct there. All right? So again, we have to be able to look at an angle that it's asking about and find where it is on the graph by tracing it out. D, F, E is this angle. All right? Next question, it says name uh, an angle complementary with AFE. So once again, we need to find AFE. AFE is here. So this is angle AFE. It's 50 degrees. I want to find an angle that's complementary with it. Well, remember, complementary means add up to 90. Add up to 90. So what I need to figure out is, first of all, what number I'm looking for to add up to 90. 50 plus 40 adds up to 90. Is there an angle on this diagram that's 40? Okay, the answer is yes, and that angle is B, F, C. Angle B, F, C is the correct answer. B, F, C is the right answer there. All right? So those two are complementary because one's 50, one's 40. 50 plus 40 adds up to 90. The last question, 
Name an angle supplementary with AFE. All right, so let's locate the angle first. AFE, that's the same one that they had up here before. It's 50 degrees. Supplementary means add up to 180. All right, so 50 plus what add up, adds up to 180? I need to subtract. 180 minus 50 would give me 130. So I'm looking for an angle whose measure is 130 to be my answer here. We've got one already labeled. And then that's angle D, F, E is the right answer. Angle D, F, E. So hopefully at this point you're getting comfortable with the notation for angles, how to name them correctly, how to locate them on a diagram, how to trace them out, and also how to answer certain vocabulary questions like acute, obtuse, right, complementary, supplementary. All right, so uh, use what we've learned here in this lesson to make sure that you're completing the quiz, and we will... See you on the next lesson.